Hi everyone, this is Ravinder. Today I'm back with another tutorial of uh, creating this seamless loop. Uh, first of all, a big shout out to uh, Ducky 3D who have created that initial uh, concept of uh, creating this kind of similar loop. So uh, I have used that same technique and uh, make sure that each and every ball should remain in the frame. Uh, so I think let's get started. So before starting this uh, tutorial, so we need to enable one of the add-on which is the add curve curve tools right so after you enable it you should be able to see all these curve options you know the additional curve options so here uh, you can you now get this first curve spiral and here you can play with some settings right for example I need a curve of 2 and let's increase the steps to 50 and for the radius so uh, no let's start with the height first let's see okay this should be good enough somewhere around four ish five yeah and for the radius let's move somewhere around three yeah and for the z let's bring it down to somewhere minus four yeah things like this and you can also do a rotation you know of this spiral from this small window itself so here I like to set it to somewhere around 50. Okay, so this should be good. So let's go to the geometry, uh, the curve options, you know, curve properties. Uh, go to geometry. Let's increase the depth to 0.2 somewhere and increase the resolution. Yeah, so this should be fine. And from the bevel properties itself, if you see the original animations we have, like you know, one cut is here, and then we have this glass thing, then we have this plastic thing. To create this kind of effect, we can you know enable the start and end mapping, right? So from here you can reduce the 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 curve shape, something like this, right? And now you can simply hit duplicate by Shift T, and you can start following you know uh, following the curve curve from from here itself. Now I'm speeding up my process to create that complete shape. So when you are done, you should be able to create this kind of shape where we have some smaller pieces and there are and few are like longer pieces. The shorter ones are definitely the plastic ones, which are slightly thick. So to add that kind of thickness, we'll be enabling a couple of uh, modifiers. So let's add a subdivision surface. Then let's add uh, a solidifier, right? Now, the plastic ones are slightly thick. Then the the transparent ones so we'll do we need to add a couple of thickness so let's add the minus and 15 right so this will you'll see that this is slightly you know it extruded it towards you know the outer ring right okay now you can select the other piece and select the modifier and add subdivision surface and solidifier now you can retain, retain the settings as is, right? Because this one we wanted it to be little, you know, little inside the, the plastic one. So now you can simply copy the settings by selecting the other long shapes and the main shape. Now you can control L and copy more modifiers, right? Now if you see a slight gap between these two shapes, or you're not happy with the overlap, you can simply select the, the top shape the top plastic one and update the settings like this. So this is your first shape is ready. So similarly, you can create the other curve like you see in that example, which is which is there in the background, right? So I'm not going into that detail and moving into the animation part. So here, as you can see that this is my basic shape. So I'm duplicating my last shape because I need that, that clean curve to start with my animation. So I'm removing all the different uh, modifiers that I have created and uh, the different start and end values that I have done. So yeah, here's my shape. Now, now I, I need to uh, create create a mesh ball, which is from UV sphere. And I'm increasing the subdivisions like this. I'm scaling this ball something like this. So, so now I have to make that ball follow this path right so let's rename our path to path one right now select this ball 
go under constraints add follow path now choose this path path one yep now add this follow curve now if you you know play with this value you'll probably see the you know your wall is following that curve right for this example let's put the initial position to somewhere here on the top right so this value is minus 100 right and my end value is 0 like this right so let's start with minus 100 the top position so I've already set up my camera and if you go to the camera mode so the dimensions are similar to the Instagram reel which is 1080 and 1920 so these are the settings that I'm following up for this tutorial right so let's move square to a new collection which is LM01 hit ok ok square is one now if you change the constraint settings right see so it will look something like this right now I have to start animating it so let's start with creating a keyframe here and let's move to your 150 value so let's move it down to zero right and this is your second frame just to make that seamless we'll start our animation from minus 20 so we'll get that in a minute, right? So here we have our first animation. So let's duplicate it now. Shift D, right? Now adjust the frames of second wall to somewhere around minus 60, right? So we'll again hit a duplicate. Now move that to minus 100. Now hit another duplicate. Now make that somewhere around minus 30. Now we'll create another duplicate and bring that to minus 50. Right? So these are your different walls. Right? Now to create that duplicate, now simply you need to do is select all these frames. Now just see that. So at frame 0, my maximum value of my keyframes are going till minus 100, right? So I have to maintain that gap on, on frame 150 or I'll say it simply. So I'll simply or I'll simplify it. You need to make the frames which are there, which are on frame 0 similar to, so you seem to or I'll simplify that. You need to make all these frames like the position that they have. It's on slide on your end frame, right? So to create that, select all these pairs, right? Hit duplicate. After duplicating, the only thing that you need to remember is at frame zero, so whatever your first keyframe value, right? In this case is minus 100. You simply need to reduce those number of keyframes from your end keyframe. So in our case, I simply move to frame 150 and drag my all these keyframes to value at 50 because uh, you know when we deduct 100 from 150 is 50. So my first keyframe is 50. By doing this, you're maintaining your position of your first set of animation, right? To your end set of animation, like this, right? So if you see that animation, you should be able to see the loop. So here uh, is a final scene. We have uh, created one more spiral uh, and that also has uh, some you know animation going on similar to what I have already created like this, right? So before creating any uh, material, uh, let's create an area light first. So this is for just the reference purposes and it will change when we apply the final light setup. Let's select our first uh, small piece, which is the plastic. Let's create our first material. Let's simply add, uh, so let's isolate this one. Okay. So let's simply add a base color, something like this one. And to give it a little bump, I'll be creating a bump node. I'll just 
simply plug into the normal. So add a color ramp, simply plug the color value to height, uh, add a noise texture, and to the noise texture, I simply hit Control D to bring these two nodes. And from here, you can bring, bring factor to factor, right? And you can scale this value something like this. Right? Now here, you can simply reduce the strength like this. And again, roughness something like this. Let's give slight roughness. Scale to zero. And again, I don't want any detail here as well, right? So this is your first material ready. And you can again go to the color you can simply change to whatever is for your liking. Right? Okay. Since we have already created this material, we can apply the same material to the other short objects. For example, uh, you can select all the smaller pieces like this. You can select this one and you can hit Control N and you can go to Link Material. And similarly, you can go to the other pieces like this. Oops, sorry. We go to the other pieces like this and select the, the top one which is this control l link materials right now if you can see that we have already copied all our materials like this right now we can again go to our second object which is class so here uh you select this material hit class now we are going to remove this principal BSDF. Now hit class BSDF. Now hit to transparent BSDF. Hit control shift. Drag with your right mouse button. There is a mix shader. Plug this to the surface. And bring that light path. Object, right? Hit up math mode. Now, you need to plug a couple of values. One is the shadow ray, and second is the reflection ray. And you can just change the, the from add to maximum. You have to plug this value to the factor. That's it. This is your glass material, right? So now you have to apply the same material to the other glass objects. So, okay, this is your glass. Right, this is glass, and this is plastic. This is glass. So we'll so we'll select this material at the end. This is plastic. This is glass, plastic, and this is glass. Right now, select this one and hit Control L, link material. Now, if you see the the final view, uh yeah, so it should look something like glass. So for the background, you'll simply add uh, basic color to the wall. Make sure you are selecting the roughness value, slightly high. Yeah, so specular is zero, roughness full, and that's it. This should be your final uh, backdrop. Okay, all right. For the inside box, uh, let's select the walls first, okay. like this. So we need to apply the same material which we applied to the the out the outer plastic shells, right? So we will definitely you know copy the settings from the plastic one. So you can so I simply what I'll do is copy these values, copy, select one of the ball, sorry, not the ball, hit new ball one, here's this, and here you go. Now simply remove this principal BSDF, select this one, and change the color. Something like orange, right? Okay. So our first material is ready. So now you do simply need to select all these balls and hit first ball, Control L, link material, right? So this is done. Now if you see, so now when you go to the camera mode, see the timeline. Go to the render view. You will see these walls are colored now. Now that we have created uh, 
the material to these walls. Now let's get started with the lighting. Okay. So here is my scene. I want to split my view to see my both views. I mean, where are we on the lighting? So in the shader editor under world, I have already added a sky texture like this. So you can copy all these values, right? And uh, for the for the lighting. So to control my lighting and give that not that harsh look on the on the subject, I want to create a soft box, which I recently you know learned from uh, Smith. Is I'm not sure if I'm you know correct, pronouncing correctly his name or his channel name. So yeah, definitely a big shout out to this guy. I've uh, you know added a link to this to his channel on the, in the description, so you can uh, take a look. So yeah, he has he has shown a very great technique. So here I'm adding a plane. Right, slightly moving it down and naming this material to softbox. And I'm just simply adding in this translucent PSDF. I'm plugging it to the surface. Now you see the light now. See that you know that brightness there, right? And you can change these settings to get it more softer, or you can reduce the Overall brightness, control the bright brightness as well. Right, so this is one. So before exiting this view, I need to pin in my softbox to light. So select my softbox first, then this light with Control P. Select. Right now, this is all pinned. So exit this view, move that light. G Z, scale it up. Now you can rotate it from cursor. Select this light. Like this. Now select both these objects. Shift D. Select one of the light. Bring it from here. Yeah. And increase the lightning to some. Yeah, this 500 is good. And this should be somewhere around 800. Let's control this light like this. But as you can see, as you can see that my background is not that light enough, so we can probably again add one more uh, light, which is a spotlight, and hit scale, G Z, move that up, and change to the bounding box center. Make that placement somewhere. Make that towards the background. Now you need to increase the power to something like this, six thousand, right? Yeah, like this. And you can change the view where you want to make that focus. Okay. Now you can also increase the spot size and blend them out. Yeah. Right. So this is your uh, final scene. So let's see the, the render of it. Here is the final render. If you have noticed that I've given a couple of uh, you know colors to these walls, and you can simply do that by you know duplicating that material and changing the colors. So this is up to you. And uh, finally, if you have noticed that you you see that slightly uh, you know motion blur into that animation, so you can enable that motion blur from the render settings. Yeah, you can simply you know, change the shutter, shutter angle to 0 0.10, right? So yeah, so this concludes uh, this tutorial. And when you all render this frame, you should be able to get that kind of loop animation. Yeah, something like this. So I hope you got the concept and uh, like to see your results as well. Uh, you can tag me on Instagram. I have already linked my channel down there in the description box. And yeah, we'll see you next time with another great tutorial. Thank you so much. Bye.